So welcome back. I wanted to use this segment to talk about our CBPR model. That It's a conceptual model that we have developed as a frame for thinking about the CBPR and community engagement process and how you can think about using this model as a planning and reflection tool on your own partnership. So this model has been developed over a period of time since 2006 and we're still working on it now in 2016 and really the key question that drove the creation of this model is to ask what is the added value of partnering and partnering practices for improving health outcomes and health equity and how can we develop a science of CBPR and community engagement that shows that partnering matters for improving health equity and it makes a difference in terms of the conditions of people's lives. So we are interested in trying to assess the links between practices and the pathways between these practices and outcomes. And we developed this model after looking at the literature, after looking at other models, after looking at our own experience. We actually took this to a consultation with many partnerships around the country, some national partnerships. We were able to develop some surveys looking at ways to measure components of the model and we did an initial testing of the model with 200 federally funded partnerships and we also had a valuable consultation over many years with the think tank of academic and community partnerships and many thanks to different funding sources for contributing to the continual de development of the model and the new Engage for Equity grant that is also called Advancing Community Engaged Partnerships funded by the National Institute of Nursing Research. I want to talk about these elements, these dimensions, one by one. And the first dimension is context. And really the question is, what is the importance of context? Well, context shapes the whole creation of a partnership. It involves the social and structural issues of the community, the socioeconomic status, the place, is it rural or urban, the history, the environment, uh, issues of community safety, violence, the level or practices of institutional racism in that context, the culture even the role of institutions. Cult context is also shaped by the politics and the policies that are in place. Are there national policies that are supporting this community? Are there local policies? Are there local governance? What's the level of local government in terms of shaping the context? Are there segregated neighborhoods? What's the role of policy in really impacting the partnership? Of course, the health issue. You know, is it an issue of priority to the community? Is it an issue that the community would even care about if you approach the community with that issue? The level of collaboration has to do with what's the history of the institutional connections between the university, could be also the public health department, and the community-based community organizations or community members themselves. Is there a history of trust? Is there a history of mistrust that has to be overcome? What is your starting point? And again, that leads to the question of what truly is the capacity of each partner and the readiness of each partner to engage? Is the university supportive of engagement? Does the university have policies in that way? Is the community have capacity and readiness of organizations that are available that the university could engage with? And of course, that involves other players as well um, within that community. So these levels of context shape the capacity of a partnership to form and start and create its own dynamics. And you have three basic dimensions within partnership dynamics. You have, of course, your relationships, which have to do with what's your level of decision making, what's your listening to each other, how much are you sharing um, your power, how much are you reflecting together, how much are you developing your knowledge together, how much are you have a safe partnership or it enables community voice to be heard. All of that is built into relationships. The partnership structures, of course, are who is involved, which agencies, which community members, which academic teams. Or do you have health care systems involved? Do you have patients involved? Do you, and PCORI grants lend themselves to engagement with patients and families within those health care systems. Do you have government agencies involved, policymakers, funders could be members or could at least influence the structure and of course the community-based organizations. What's the level of diversity? 
Do you choose to have formal agreements between your partnership or do you choose to have informal guidelines and norms of operating? How much are you sharing the budgets? Where do the budgets come from? Where do they go? All of that is within partnership structures. At the individual level, there's the characteristics that we all come with. How flexible are we? How patient are we? How do we recognize that other people's needs and issues are equally important? What are our core values? What are the core values of our partners? Are there bridge people on the different teams? That's a critical issue. And again, some individuals maybe not are not appropriate to be doing CBPR. They're not really not having and wanting to bring these extra um, dimensions of flexibility and patience over time where your partnering will, will shape the relationships and shape the next steps of the research process. So if you're partnering well, if these practices are going well, that will then influence in a good way the strategies of research. What methods you might choose, what um, sample, what's the design, uh, whether they are ready for a randomized controlled trial that's not happening very easily in early partnerships that evolves over time, that trust. Does the intervention that you might be creating through a grant, is it fit with the culture, the knowledge, the norms and practices that emerge from that local setting, from the culture of the clinic, the culture of a community, a geographic community, the culture of a school setting? Does it fit within that? important set of knowledge and practices and values that come from the local setting. And how much is the community engaged in the research steps? Are, is the commu are community members involved in prioritizing the health issue, going back to context? Are they involved in doing the data collection? All those steps of research we've already talked about. And so therefore, does the research design end up fitting within the culture, within the research needs, and within the community priorities. I would say that all that together, those fits and the engagement contribute to then synergy where the partners are working together in a good way, where there's co-learning and co-adapting and co-listening and moving forward to engage and do the steps of the research process. So hopefully, if you've th thought about the context, you're partnering well, it influences your choice of methods, your choice of intervention, it fits within the culture, then your outcomes will be very broad. Hopefully your outcome will be oriented towards your specific project, whether it's increased breast and cervical cancer screening or it's food justice and access to better foods in a community, whether it's um, increased healthy behaviors of youth and youth being, you know, shaping their own lives. And in addition to the specifics of the project, you have the possibility of thinking through what are the intermediate system and capacity outcomes that a community needs to go through before you can say we have improved health conditions. That might be changed practices and policies at the community level around access to food and getting hopefully addressing food desert issues. It might be access to um, contraceptives for adolescents, it changed practices, changed policies. Also, you have to look at the university. It's not just community changing their policies, but is this partnership influencing a, a university's ability to engage in community research in a more thoughtful, authentic way, where the, it can be responsive to community settings and community needs. So sustainability is another outcome, and often we worry, those of us who get grants for two to four to five years that create interventions, the grant funding ends, and then you walk up and leave that community and that intervention doesn't have the capacity to be sustained. The more we have ownership within the partnership process, the more that the intervention fits within the cultural knowledge, there's greater capacity to sustain that intervention or for together to think about what are going to be the resources needed, maybe to insert that intervention into the normal school day for example. Changed power relations, creating them to be more equal is a relationship type of outcome. Cultural reinforcement as positive protective factors within any community. Increased capacities could be at the agency level, the CBO level, the personal level. All these capacities can increase. 
with these intermediate system and capacity outcomes, that is the pathway then to improving health so that health conditions can change, so that people can improve their behaviors, can feel that their lives are sustained within their culture. However, the community itself identifies those health indicators that most matter to them. So that's the model as a whole. We wanted to show you that this model, even though it appears to be a single model, is really a dynamic process. This is a model, a draft model, from the Rochester Healthy Community Partnership from the Mayo Clinic and their partners with different community organizations that were serving the Somali, Cambodian, and Latino communities in their larger partnership. They've worked with the model and made it theirs. They've added some concepts in red here of cultural humility and identity as a stronger part, this appreciation of individual and community assets, the complexity of roles and relationships, because they're serving three very different communities. So that complexity to them is a dynamic part of this model to them. There's some tangible assets. Moving to outcomes, they're talking about outcomes really as a process, as a journey, as a set of relationships. So for them, the model didn't have to stay static. They could take it and actually make it theirs. It kind of looks the same here, but I'll show you another version of a model from Australia where a child or children's oral health partnership took the main concepts of context, partnerships, research, and outcomes and created completely different, though thinking about it, issues for them that matter. They identified in context cultural and linguistic diversity, barriers to care, because they were looking at oral health. So Barriers to care surfaced as a context issue that was really important to identify. They looked at partnerships from both existing and new partnerships. So that was kind of an interesting twist on the model, not just where they were at statically, but what they started with and what they were adding. They looked at some research specifically. They started with exploratory qualitative research. Then they went to an exploratory, then they went to a pilot, then they went to exploratory trial. And then they have a whole set of outcomes specific to oral health and contributing to the evidence base, oral health peer educators as an outcome, as a kind of sustained way of um, keeping oral health alive with children's health. Uh, they have a child oral health education manual. So any partnership can use the model and insert your own context, your own partnership issues, your own research effect, impact, and your own outcomes. And we've been doing this as a whole, looking again, what is this model, and taking it to different early partnerships, taking it to student groups, taking it to um, older partnerships, and saying, how can you use this model? So in a recent CBPR Institute, we asked each team that was developing a research agenda to share, to sit down together and create your own unpacking of this model. And this was a group working with immigrant families for work and family support. So they looked at their context of undocumented status. They looked at their partnership dynamics. They looked at the intervention research design. It, no pictures here, no beautiful colors, just kind of the uh, steps for them, their own lists, and the outcomes that they wanted to see. A different way of another group working on social development for urban youth. What was the kind of model they wanted to create? Um, and then this is a model from a tribal community looking at how to address underage drinking on, uh, one, on a reservation and kind of their context, their way of presenting their own dynamics, and they will have to explain it, their own way of seeing how it impacted their intervention and the outcomes that they wanted to see of prevention, awareness, pride, tradition, and empowerment, love, sobriety, as all in one package. So this is kind of a vision statement at the same time that it's trying to look at the different stages of a CBPR path to their own outcomes that they wanted to see. So I wanted to ask you here as IRL teams to begin to think about what model would you create from your, for yourself? If you're just starting, maybe the best place to start is the context because you bring that knowledge of your context with you. You all have some experience or some understanding through maybe looking at the data. What is the social and structural, the SES level? Who is in that community? What are the potential um, ways to 
um, identify the institutions in that community. Some may be barriers, some may be facilitators. What are the policies that may be barriers and facilitators in your own community? What is the health issue that you've identified? What is the level of trust you think you have now and maybe want to aspire to in the future? What are your capacities? Where are your challenges, weaknesses right now? So that's the context. You are also at the beginning stages of establishing your own partnership dynamics. Who are you currently working with? Who's in that? Who are in these boxes? Who may be missing? You may think there are other potential partners that you want to bring in, but they're not there yet. Do you have yourself a desire to create formal agreements, or do you have an informal set of expectations and guidelines that you're working with? Those are all your partnership structure questions. On the relationship level, do you have modes of decision making, modes of addressing conflict, modes of listening, modes of leadership that you want to think about, and who are you as individuals? So that can be starting place again, thinking towards the future. As you're just beginning, you may not yet know your research methods, your research interventions that you're choosing, but just to think about ahead. How would you fit what you want to do within the cultural knowledge, community-based, community, local value system? What kind of synergy do you want to create internally? And how will you engage the community and yourselves in, and community voices in all the steps of research? And then again, you may not be at this stage yet, but what outcomes at the system and capacity level would you like to see that would improve health on your particular issue? If you're dealing with a very defined health question, that's good, but then go back to the broader question of intermediate systems and capacities that really need to be set in place to identify that system. So if you're looking at adolescent health and you're looking at teenage pregnancy, that might be your specific issue that you care about. But are there then systems in place in that community that will show that teenage health is given a priority? Are there school-based health centers? Is there access to um, health education for the teens? Is there peer support? Are there peer counselors? All of those kind of things would go into your intermediate outcomes because those would be the issues that impact adolescent teen pregnancy. And are there other ways to have um, the teens themselves involved in that issue so you're not doing it for the teens, but you're doing it with the teens, which takes you back to your partnership. So these are all cycles of loops together. If you want a capacity, if you want an outcome of reduced teen pregnancy, for example, do you have teens in your partnership structure to enable you to work together to get to that point of an outcome? And they may define the outcome, in fact, very differently once you start engaging the youth. So that's the model here that shows these feedback loops and allows you to use this model, hopefully, for your own planning and your own reflection. And you can take it then a year from now and come back to it and say, where are you at with what you hope for in the future and where are you wanting to be now as, a, as an opportunity for reflection? And again, I appreciate um, the involvement of everybody in the Engage for Equity grant on this particular model and then the think tank of practitioners. Thank you.